With all the recent releases of mirrorless cameras, there's been people questioning, will we actually see any new DSLRs? Well, today it seems Canon have put those rumors to rest with a new DSLR. No, it's not the much anticipated 90D or 7D Mark III that everyone's been asking for. It's the SL3. SL3 as in replacement for the SL2. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I did a video regarding the Canon APS-C DSLR lineup and talking about how oversaturated it was. And one of the things I suggested was dropping the 200D in favor of the M50. Now, that did get quite a bit of backlash with people saying that the SL2 was different from the M50, most notably in terms of price. The 200D SL2, it is very confusing, isn't it? The 200D you can get for quite a bit cheaper than the M50, partly because the 200D is such an older camera than the M50. So, Now, with that, I wasn't suggesting they should stop the 200D. What I was suggesting was that replacing it with a newer model would be kind of irrelevant because you've then got the M50. Well, I'm guessing Canon saw that video and decided to ignore it. The other thing that that video kind of highlighted was a lot of people commenting saying that they found the video very confusing because of the names that I was giving the cameras. Because I used all of the European naming structures rather than the American ones, which thus then highlighted how confusing the Canon naming structure is. Because in the European market, all the cameras are hundreds, Ds, thousands of Ds. Whereas in America, everything is T something I, T something S. And in Asia, they're all KISS X something or KISS X something I. So that highlights just how confusing the naming structures of Canon cameras are, that they're using three different naming structures for different parts of the world for exactly the same camera. So the new replacement, the SL3, if you're in the US, the KISS X10 if you're in Asia, or the 250D if you're in the EU. I did hear somewhere that it's also going to be known as the 200D2 in China. I don't know how true that is, though. But this release pretty much highlights exactly what I was talking about in that video that I did. Because this new SL3 250... Do you know what? From now on, we're not going to refer to it as an SL3 or a 250D or whatever because it's too confusing. So I'm just simply going to refer to it as the new camera and the old camera. Because when you look at the specs of the old camera versus this new camera, it's pretty much the same size and weight, which isn't a bad thing because that was one of the big selling points of the old one was that it's the smallest, lightest DSLR that you can buy. Now, in terms of the specifications, in terms of stills, there's nothing really changed. It still uses pretty much the same 24 megapixel sensor. It's now coupled to a Digic 8 processor, which realistically is going to make no difference to the quality of your still images. It's still capable of five frames a second, which is the same as the old camera. It still uses the same 9-point AF system. They could have at least upgraded it to the 19-point AF system from the old 750D T6i. The only difference realistically from a stills perspective is the updated dual-pixel autofocus, which now has some 3,500 AF points built into it and allows for eye autofocus. Although, it wouldn't surprise me if it's eye autofocus in single shot again. One of the biggest selling points of the old camera that everyone raved about was using it for video. Because it's a really small, cheap camera with a fully articulating screen and dual pixel autofocus. Which means it's ideal for vloggers and video shooters in general. And the only upgrades really I can see on this new camera are focused around the video. So the dual pixel autofocus has been improved. But the video features have been upgraded because it now includes 4K video. But it does also express that you can pull 8 megapixel still images from the video. Which is canon code for we've cropped the crap out of this. 
So you not only have your 1.6 times crop from using an APS-C sensor, but you've got an additional 1.6 times crop on top of that, meaning it's about a 2.5 and a half, 2.6 times crop factor. Exactly the same as you get in the M50. So pretty much this new camera is the exact same specs as the M50, but in a DSLR format. The only difference that I can actually see between the SL3, the new camera, and the M50 is the battery. Now they both use the same battery, the LPE17, but the SEPA rating for this new camera is over a thousand shots, whereas the M50 is nowhere near that. Now given the fact that it's the same battery, you can only presume that it's just power saving within the camera that's extending the battery life. Although until we get real world reviews of it, we don't know really what the difference is. So this camera seems to be an incremental upgrade of the predecessor, but one that doesn't really make any sense. Because if you're looking at this camera from a stills perspective, you might as well save some money and buy the previous model because it's pretty much exactly the same. And that would free up some money to go towards lenses. If you're looking at it from a video perspective, yes, it's got features like the 4K, but they're not all that usable. From what I can see, the M50 offers you pretty much everything that this camera does, now arguably even cheaper. And not only can you use the adapter that then allows you to continue using EF and EFS lenses, but it also allows you the option of using the EFM lenses. And while the EFM lineup isn't exactly the biggest at the moment, that's where the future's heading. And Canon have already stated outright that they've no intention of scrapping the EFM lineup. So they're only going to be making more lenses available for it. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and say Canon haven't changed the tactic at all. They're still spinning money for old rope. But what do you make of the SL3 250D KISS X10 200D2. Do you see any appeal in this? Is there something I've missed maybe? Is it something that you're considering buying? And if so, for why? Leave your thoughts and comments in the box down below. Thank you so much for stopping by and hopefully I will see you in the next video.